my name is Nancy Grove and I'm a Master Gardener in San Mateo County. We're going to talk today about harvesting and storage of onions. So this year I grew three types of onions. A white keepsake onion, a bronze damposta onion, which is a type of torpedo onion, and the talon onion, which is another white onion, but which grew very differently, as we'll see. As you can see, the keepsake onion has lots of layers of nice brown skins on it. That will protect the onion very well during storage. The leaves are brown, and each leaf actually makes a layer of onion skin. When I cut through the neck here of the onion, you can see it's just completely brown and dry, so there's no portal of entry for bacteria or fungi to get in. This onion will be a good keeper, as we call it. That's important for me because I only grow one crop of onions a year, and then they have to last for basically the rest of the year. So keepsake onion looks like it's well named. You'll notice over here, even though the ground is very, very dry, that some of the onions that I haven't harvested yet um, still have green leaves on them. I've been waiting for these ampostas and talons to all fall over. And as you can see, some of them have. I've been waiting for these to fall over so that they will be dry like this one. They haven't yet, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest them today and hope that they dry during the curing phase, which we'll talk about next. As you can see, if I cut through the neck of one of these, you can see that there is a moist cut surface and this will be much more likely to introduce molds or rot when it's in storage. So I'm just hoping when I harvest these that this will dry and close off during curing. Now we're going to harvest some of these. As you can see, they come up really easily, um, partly because I let the bed dry out. I typically turn the water off in mid-June, and now I have a full month for the ground to dry. It makes it much easier to pull them out and to clean the, the dirt off. So I'm just gonna be pulling these up. As you can see, some of them have still their green leaves, but that's okay. And putting them in my cart over here. And I'll sort them out later, which ones are which varieties. As you can see, um, I have missed a few flowers along the way. Typically, when the flowers come up, they sap bigger from the bulb underneath, which you don't want. You want the bulb to be as big and full of moisture as possible. So this is just taking away from the bulb. And you can cut these off down at the stem. I have a few left here that I just frankly didn't get around to cutting earlier in their, in their lives. So I brought my onions over to the curing bench. I, I let the onions sit outside for two weeks, um, the purpose being to let them seal all the moisture inside, develop the nice brown skins around the outside, and be ready then to cut the leaves and the roots and go into storage. I do this here because it's in the shade. The onions should not be left in the direct sun. There's good air circulation in this old web patio lounge, and they're away from any moisture, any sprinklers, anything like that. Those are the three characteristics you need, is dry, air circulation, and shade. So they'll sit here for two weeks. I typically arrange them so that the dry leaves are sort of sitting on top of the bulbs, uh, again, to protect from moisture or any sunlight that gets over here. All right, so now that these have been sitting here for a couple of weeks, they're ready to be prepared for storage. To do that, I'm going to just dust the, a little bit of the dirt off, try to keep the brown skins intact, clip off the leaves at the neck, and luckily this is one that's got a nice sealed end, and then you want to clip off the roots, mostly for cosmetic purposes. It just looks nicer. So here we have our ready-to-store onion. 
one thing to be sure of is don't wash these when you're getting ready for storage. They really don't do well with any kind of moisture. Storage conditions need to be dry, um, dark, and either one of two temperatures. Onions can do well in very cool temperatures, like around 40 degrees, but that doesn't mean you should store them in your refrigerator because refrigerators are too moist and the roots will start to grow. So a uh, dry garage um, out in a shed somewhere, I'll show you the shed that I have, as long as it's dark and well ventilated, those work pretty well. So I'm going to start putting my onions in this rack for storage. So this is my storage shed. It's out kind of in the back corner of the yard under a big tree, so it doesn't get too hot in here during the summer. As you can see, I have a, an inexpensive uh, wire basket system that has lots of space in between the baskets that gives good circulation to the onions. I also keep my garlic, I have to show off my garlic, keep my garlic and shallots out here. And I can basically use the onions, if I harvest in July, I can basically use them through about March of the following year. So that's pretty good. After that, I end up having to use leeks or something until the next harvest comes in. Hope you've learned something new today about the harvesting and storage of onions. Onions can be challenging sometimes, but you know what? There's nothing better than being able to just go out to the backyard and grab one when you need it. Thanks a lot and goodbye.